the stream. There we go. Oh, Hi, guys. Cool. Sorry. Hi, YouTube. Hi, Facebook. <clears throat> We're live on Instagram as well tonight. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm good. Anyways, welcome back to Monday Night Live. Live. Every Monday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, we are here for you. Who are, who are we, though? I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a board-certified family physician with 20 years of clinical experience. And this lovely specimen is my wife, my manager, and my assistant, and also a registered nurse with how many years of Clinical experience? Uh, going 18? on no, going on fifteen. Fifteen It'll be years 18 of clinical experience. Yeah, you yeah. probably know this dude because we're on his channel, but you may not know me. But yeah. I also have a YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff too. So yeah. at Nisha loves it. So she actually does videos on her YouTube. A lot of people say, "Well, what do you eat in a day?" She's got videos of what I eat in a day, what she eats in a day, what baby Beckett eats in a day. Yeah. Well, without video of him breastfeeding because that, that might get a strike. But otherwise, yeah, she has that kind of stuff on her channel. So it's also about fashion and home decor. and tra Well, it used to be about travel. <laughs> yeah, not right now, but, but hopefully you know, soon. Maybe. Yeah, but that's a great resource if you just want to see the more practical recipes. Yeah, I do keto recipes, keto bore recipes, carnivore recipes. Yeah, yeah. And so usually we have a topic for these lives that we'll chat about for 10 to 400 minutes. But tonight we thought, you know, there's so many questions. So many people have questions. Let's just devote the entire hour to answering your questions. And so we're going to be taking questions from Facebook. We're going to be taking questions from YouTube and from Instagram. So if you have a question about keto, ketovore, carnivore, intermittent fasting, low carb in general, Banting, Atkins, primal, ancestral, paleo. Proper human diet. Proper human diet. <laughs> yeah, that's what the, all those are. They're they are on the proper human diet spectrum as long as they're very low carb. Uh, could, what about fashion questions you want I mean, no, that's okay. No, we'll hold off we'll on the fashion. On fashion. Go check her out on her channel if you yeah. want to know about fashion. Yeah, so let's just uh, dive in. Um, housekeeping, as always, the way you can help us help more people is to share this video. On Facebook, you're welcome to start a watch party and invite all your overweight, metabolically unhealthy friends. But remember, you can be a metabolically unhealthy and not be overweight. So you better invite all your friends just to be sure. Uh, you can share it in your groups, on your profile, on your page. On YouTube, you can click the share button and share it anywhere in an email, text message, WhatsApp, all that stuff. And uh, on Instagram, I think you can just send it to people. I'm not sure about the Instagram share, but that's how you help us to help more people. And so if you've got an aunt, uncle, brother, sister, mom, and daddy that just don't want to listen to you, maybe they'll listen to us. I mean, I wore a pink shirt for your mom. Maybe she'll listen to me. I don't know. It's also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And that, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I think Ken's going to be doing a YouTube video about breast cancer yep. and the keto, ketogenic carnivore yep. way of eating. At least one, if not two. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. We, now, I, go ahead. Sorry. sorry. You don't want to answer some questions? Yeah. yeah. Well, I was just going to say tomorrow, uh, just to give you a heads up, since you're kind of in the circle of trust here tonight, tomorrow night, uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be posting a YouTube video about using a low carb diet to help autism. And there's actually quite a bit of meaningful research about this. And I'm going to talk about that and, and just give uh, moms and dads of autistic kids some hints and tricks and tips and hacks on how to help at least improve their child's autism a little bit. And then you've got a video coming out tomorrow mm -hmm. about fasting. Oh, fasting. Intermittent fasting, long fasting, dirty fasting. If dirty you don't know fasting. what that is, I kind of talk about that in that video too. I might do a whole video about dirty fasting because of It sounds it's, dirty. It's very dirty. dirty. Three you should call it naughty it's fasting. Christina Aguilera, dirty. Oh. Do you remember her album, Dirty? Yeah. There was a no, song. I don't, I don't but, remember. Yeah. Anyways, so I just saw a question on Instagram. I thought we'd kick off with yep. this because it's a topic that Dr. Barry really likes to talk about. It's poop. Poop. What's the question about How poop? How do you fight constipation on carnivore? Yep. So there's this huge myth out there in the medical and nutrition community that you have to have fiber in order to be able to poop. In fact, people with chronic constipation, they'll buy powdered fiber 
and add it to their drinks. Uh, first of all, there is no meaningful research on this planet that shows that increasing your fiber intake makes it easier for you to poop. Now, it will bulk up your stool and make you have a larger quantity of poop. But I think our friend, Dr. Paul Mason says it best. If you've already got a traffic jam, which is kind of, you know, you see the, the, the analogy there with chronic constipation, is the, is the solution for a traffic jam to put more cars on the road? Because that doesn't make a lot of sense if you think about it that way, right? And so basically what carnivore does is you, you don't poop nearly as much some people don't even poop once a day, and it's not because they're constipated. It's because that meat is so full of nutrition, you absorb almost every bit of it. And so that's that. this is one of the reasons that the carnivore portion of the proper human diet spectrum is so good for people with irritable bowel, whether diarrhea predominant or constipation for ulcerative colitis and for Crohn's disease. It lets your colon rest. You're, you're not constantly having these ginormous poops three, four, five, six times a day, you're pooping a, a very small poop once a day or once every other day. You're not constipated. You're not backed up because there's nothing in there because your body absorbed it all because meat is literally all nutrition. Is that enough about poop? I bet you talk about it again before the night's over. If it comes up, we'll talk about it. Whatever. All right. What about collagen supplements? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, there's another, it's like a thought error in people, in humans. I don't know where it came from, but if you're going to stop eating crap and start eating a healthy diet, then so many of us think I've got to have, I've got to drink protein shakes or I got to use collagen powders or I got to take this collagen supplement. Well, that's because um, the healthy diets that the we other cut, right the healthy like diets, vegan yeah. and all that you do need supplements or you're you not gonna will be college. completely <clears throat> malnourished. So yeah. it's been ingrained if you change your way of eating that you need to supplement yeah. with all these things. But it's not really true when you eat the a proper human, human diet. diet. Yeah. And so if you're eating a very low carbohydrate diet that is full of animal protein, animal fat, animal meat, and it can be seafood, it can be uh, shellfish, it can be ruminant meat, which is my favorite, it can be, it can be chickens and possums and skunks and, and, and goats and sheep, meat, deer, any meat, you're going to be getting every single building block of collagen that you need. So the collagen powders and collagen supplements, if you're eating your meat, are a complete and utter waste of money. You don't need them at all. And I actually have a video on YouTube about collagen, my, my favorite collagen supplements. And it's a tr little tricky video because my favorite collagen supplements are sardines, are eating the gristle in my steak. And bone broth. And bone broth. Those are, those are collagen supplements. Homemade bone broth. <clears throat> because yeah. there's way more collagen in homemade bone broth than in the vodka. It's more like stock, the stuff that you buy. Like right. even, you know, kettle and fire and the good quality stuff is not going to have the amount of collagen right. Right. that yours at home. And it's super yeah. easy. And we're going to do a bone broth recipe in the next few yes. weeks. So that'll be on my channel. With some special today. bones, not just any old bones. Very special bones. Yeah. All right. Um, what about triglycerides and keto if you have a familial component? Yeah. So can keto still help? You can have a familial or a genetic predisposition to have high triglycerides and even to have lower HDL cholesterol, which is the the other good cholesterol. But your diet is going to override and cancel any of these genetic predispositions. Some, if you've got a genetic predisposition to high triglycerides and you eat real keto, your triglycerides are going to be normal. They may still be on the higher end of normal, but they're going to be within normal limits. They're going to be under 150 here in the U.S. I can't remember the U.K., uh, the way they measure it. But, yeah, it's going to be under 150. Now, you, if you have that genetic predisposition, you may never be able to get your triglycerides down to 80, like niches. That may not ever, what was your 60? It was something crazy low. 63, yeah, 63, yeah. But now you may not be able to have that, but I would much rather you have a 145 than a 245. 
And if you're eating the standard American diet or even the American Diabetes Association recommended diet, you're going to have high triglycerides because carbohydrates are what cause you to have high triglycerides, not fat or protein. Okay, let's talk about a hot topic in the news right uh, now. Okay. I don't even think I have to say. <clears throat> well, there's two hot topics. Let's talk about the kidney one first. So there's a news uh, story going around about kidney and keto and how kidney is bad for if you're on keto and about the actors. I guess yeah. that, I haven't yeah. actually read. Yeah, that yeah there was an Indian actress who who died and she's in her 20s or 30s. She was young and they she was on the keto diet, so they immediately blamed it on the keto diet. Now, uh, both I and several doctors in this space were looking into this case. We're trying to get more information. Uh, there's just no way that keto caused her kidney failure because human physiology doesn't work that way. Uh, I, I almost guarantee when if we are able to get hold of the her past medical history and her uh, medication she was taking and other pre-existing conditions, we're going to quickly see that keto did not kill her and, kill, and cause kidney failure because it just doesn't work that way. Eventually, all of us who eat keto will perished yeah keto is great but it doesn't make you immortal but she died so young there had to be another cause we've got to see a case study before we can yeah yeah we got to see and this is her private health information if her family doesn't want to share it then forever she'll be the actress that keto killed but that doesn't mean that's true uh you may have seen a story in the news recently about a vegan couple who were feeding their infant a, just a strict raw vegan diet and the, the poor baby wound up developing uh, cerebral palsy and permanent brain damage. And that's as, and so you're like, well, yeah, you blame it on veganism. Well, here's the thing. There are physiological pathways of brain development that require omega-3 fatty acids, not ALA, but EPA and DHA, which is you can't find those in plants. And young children are often unable to, to – uh, change ALA into DHA and EPA. Also, you need sialic acid. You need carnitine for a developing brain. There's all these things you need for a developing brain that the vegan diet just does not provide. So you see how we've got a physiological pathway. We can say, oh, they're deficient in this and this and this. But there's nothing about keto that is physiologically dangerous to human kidneys. Protein is good for your kidneys. Fat is good for your kidneys. Uh, even if you eat zero carbohydrates, that's also good for your kidneys. So there's just no physiological pathway that makes that make sense. And also, you know, that's pretty sciencey, all the stuff you just said. If you don't follow Dr. Fong, follow <clears throat> Dr. Fong. Dr. Fong is actually a kidney specialist yep. who treats his patients with kidney issues with not only ketogenic eating, he lets them intermittent fast and he promotes the use of electrolytes and all the things that we talk about all the time. That's his use for the treatment of his patients. So look into Dr. Fung too, and you can find a lot of information about how keto is actually really good for the kid oh. kidneys and all the research that he has in the science if you're into reading yeah. that kind of stuff. But there's just no chem biochemical, physiological reason that eating a proper human diet of meat and veg is going to harm your kidneys. It just make, it doesn't make um, anatomical or physiological sense. Brian wants us to talk about Topo Chico. Yeah, that's the other big topic. Hot topic number two. So tonight, I'm not drinking Topo Chico. And neither am I. Yeah. So Consumer <laughs> Reports, which is a magazine I've been reading for 20 years at least. I love their, their investigative reporting. They got hold of samples of all the different, not all of them, but the, the biggest selling brands of sparkling water, mineral water, and still water. And they tested them for heavy metals and for PFASs, which are volatile compounds that come from petroleum products like plastic bottles, plastic tubing, plastic machinery parts. And they tested them. And lo and behold, Topo Chico, who we loved, had the highest level of PFAS of any of the tested waters. So mad. Let me just point out that when we first started drinking Topo Chico, <clears throat> was like several years ago and Coca-Cola didn't own them. They were privately, they were privately owned, privately owned mm -hmm. and they were imported from Mexico. Yep. So I didn't even think about 
it being yeah. bad in any form or fashion. But then Coca-Cola bought them, and then I should have maybe done some research. But it's water. Yeah, and basically, when you try to scale up a natural thing to the level of Coca-Cola or Pepsi or Kellogg's, it can't be healthy anymore. It's just impossible because so what they had to do is they started putting Topo Chico in plastic bottles. They started using plastic tubing to put the carbonation into the water. And that's where the PFASs came from was all the plastic that's involved because Coca-Cola has to have a super cheap product that they can make a huge markup on. And you can't do that if you're just taking natural spring water and using stainless steel and glass to put the carbon dioxide in and then putting it in a glass bottle. So, yeah, uh, until further notice, avoid the Topo Chico because it has a, a, the highest level of PFAS of any of the tested it products. It was nine. Yeah. And the rest of them were one a year or two. Yeah, one or two. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so a lot of you want are going to still be like, but what if it's in the glass bottle? If it, it came from the tubing, then it still yeah, has. It's from the factory. Anything. They're using plastic tubing that's full of the PFASs. And when the carbon dioxide comes through, it, it leaches the PFASs out into the water. Now, Coca-Cola did say that they were working on this problem. Yeah. I'm going to hold my breath. Yeah. So since then, we have Not changed good. over to Mountain Valley, which is actually a water from, that's kind of local to us because we're in Tennessee <clears throat> and Mountain Valley is from Hot Springs, Arkansas. Arkansas. Yep. Yep. And so that's right down the road from us. Right so road. that's awesome that we can kind of support them. They do make, I think, regular and sparkling. Yep. And they only bottle in glass. Yes. No plastic since 1840-something. Yeah, they've been around very yeah, long Yeah, and so time. right now, Mountain Valley's ours. If you have a local uh, spring water like that, that, that bottles in glass, then I would say use that. The Mountain Valley looks great to us right now. Hey, what was the other big name that, that had very low level? San Pell wasn't bad. San, Pelle, San Pellegrino, yeah. yeah. What if people want to use their Berkey <coughs> and use the mm -hmm. home seltzer thing? Is that going to, because it comes in yeah. steel. I don't know. So, okay, it depends on the water you're putting in your Berkey. Well, if it already contains PFAS, they are so small. I don't even know if a Berkey would take that out. Now, Berkey water filters are amazing. You can literally pour mud puddle water in them and have drinking water come out. But I don't know if they get out. I'll have to look. I'll, I'll reach out to the company and ask them if they get PFASs out. Um, but, I mean, yeah, you could totally do that. But we, what I like is reverse osmosis because that gets everything but the H and the 2 and the O. Everything else is gone. Uh, distillation, home distillation is another great way to do it. Um, then you can put it through your soda stream, and I think it'd be perfectly fine. All right. Here's another one from Gear Grabber. Gear Grabber. All right. I love <clears throat> people's names on YouTube. Can you take too many electrolytes and minerals? History of CHF, congestive heart failure. So the Lasix takes out the minerals. Mm -hmm. So is that a problem? You you can theoretically get too many uh, electrolytes or minerals, but I think you'd almost have to try to do that. Now, if you had a if you have a stage three, four, or five kidney disease, then talk to your doctor about uh, using a, an electrolyte or a mineral supplement. If you have congestive heart failure, talk to your doctor. But if you're on Lasix, you probably need some electrolytes and minerals because the Lasix, Lasix really makes you pee out a lot of electrolytes and minerals. But talk to your doctor if you have a pre-existing health condition like that. Um, I drink a lot of electrolytes and minerals every day. And I have normal kidney function, normal heart function, normal liver function. So I would have to literally just take take this bottle of minerals and just chug a That'd little bit. That would be hard. Literally. Uh, and it would probably You'd still not hurt me. Before. I would probably throw up because they're so salty. Yeah. It, you would have to try to get too many electrolytes and minerals. Yeah. Wow, that is really waggling around. Sorry. <laughs> oh, really like Cassandra really wants to know yes. really, really, yes, really Cassandra. bad. Do you guys ever cheat? You cheat. You know, I almost never do, but what for me, I'm carnivore. Ninety nine percent meat is what I what I live on. When I cheat, it's a keto cheat, and so it's like, whoa, that's terrible, right? So uh, we were at um, the Honeysuckle yeah. Restaurant in Nashville, Tennessee, which has ben some. Franklin. 
And I'm sorry, Franklin. Yeah, it, that's all one big thing to me. But they have the best steaks in Nashville, in my opinion. Jeff Ruby's pretty good though. Uh, <laughs> and but they have bone marrow. They have deviled eggs. I mean, it is a carnivore's a great paradise. They have a charcuterie board, oysters, oysters on the half shell. But um, I had some of uh, Nisha's uh, collard greens. Yeah. Oh, I had a couple of forts full of collard greens. That was a cheat for me. And so uh, it, it's almost like when you when you go to more and more nutrient dense diet, you move further and further right on the proper human diet spectrum. You, you become so uh, protective of your diet and so protective of your body that you're like, you know, if I eat a cheat meal, you know who I'm cheating? I'm cheating me. I'm cheating her. And I'm cheating Beckett Berry. That's who I'm cheating. I'm cheating them out of li- out of time with me because I'm going to get sick if I keep cheating. And so I'm not interested in cheating me and my family. Uh, If I could cheat Coke or Pepsi, I would cheat them for sure. But I'm not interested in cheating people I love. So why would I have a cheat meal? But if I do go off my personal eating plan, it's still with a very low carbohydrate, dark green vegetable. What about you? Well, you know, we're not all perfect. Love Dr. Barry. Uh, I am not perfect. Not perfect. Yeah. So yes, but I plan my cheat. I don't like the word cheat because I'm in control of it. It doesn't fall into my mouth and and just happens. It's, I don't know. I feel like cheating is basically it's too easy to just say, oh, I cheated. You know, I make a very conscious decision to eat something, and it's planned like it's my birthday like last year on my birthday I had a real birthday cake and it didn't even taste that good it wasn't even worth the cheat I ended up eating more barbecue and my cake went in the trash but I did eat some of it it's not one of those things that I feel like I have to make sure I don't cheat a lot of people you cheat once you cheat twice and then it's a downward spiral and you are triggered and before you know it it's been six months and you're still you fall off away cheating yeah. every now and then yeah. but really it's like two yeah. or three times a week and no. that's just the standard american diet again that's not cheating on keto right um so i eat off plan when i decide that it is a special event and i make a very conscious decision that i'm going to pay the piper when yeah. i am done eating that thing because i never feel good afterwards yeah, yeah <laughs> i'm not time. like Oh, She's having, like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. That was stupid. Why yeah. did you let me Why do that? Why did I do that? It wasn't no. worth it. So no. the longer I do this way of eating, the less that happens. But on very special, like I'll have a chocolate covered strawberry or something on our anniversary, you know, something like that. But just to cheat for the heck of it. Yeah. No. But yeah. that, I mean, it wasn't always that way. Yeah. And for, for some of us who are absolutely carb addicts, and you know who you are, having a cheat meal for you, that would be like an alcoholic saying, well, now every Friday, I'm going to have a cheat, just a cheat shot of whiskey. That'd be okay, right? I mean, it's just one shot. No big deal. Uh, that's a recipe for disaster. Or a former smoker, now a non-smoker, says, you know, every Friday, I'm going to have a cheat cigarette. Is that is that smart? Or is that is that, let's just call it what it is, that's stupid. Because they're no longer a former smoker, are they? They're, they'll be smoking again. The alcoholic is not a recovering alcoholic. He's now an alcoholic again. If you're a carboholic, cheating is dumb. Now, if you can take it and leave it, like Nisha, she can. She can eat a, a, a cheat meal and be like, whatever, that and was And then dumb. go right back to eating yeah. just yeah. meat. I know me. I cannot do that. If I was like, you know, I'm just going to have three Oreos, no. I would eat the whole bag, and then I would, be, I would have sugar cravings for the next two weeks. So if you want to cheat your own self out of good health, I mean, I guess you can. You're grown up, but I, I would advise against it. Especially if you have a history of carb addiction, yes. which a lot of people do. And since we yes. were yes. Meant, like, if you don't, America has made us all carboholics. Yeah, basically. if you don't understand what we mean by carb addiction or being addicted to sugar, check out our good friend, Dr. Robert Sivis, and you spell that C-Y-W. Yes. Somebody put his name in the comments so everybody can see how to spell it. If you're a carb addict, if you if you're an addict of any substance on the planet, you need to be following Dr. Robert Sivis because he'll help you understand not only the addiction, but he's got specific strategies to take care of yourself and love yourself so that you can win over the damage done by your addiction. 
Yes, thank you for those of you who typed in Dr. Silas's name. That's very helpful because it's it's a, it's a hard a name to spell. Yeah. yeah. All right. Lyle says, "Should I go carnivore? Should I ease into carnivore, or should I go cold turkey?" I think it's easier to ease into it. There's no there's no reason. This is not a life and death decision. Um, if you're a teetotaler and you're just an all in or none guy, then go, go cold turkey. But I don't know why you would want to do that. I would just try, I would, I transitioned over probably a, a three month period of time. And now I don't even think about vegetables, but, uh, what would you say about that? Cold turkey or transition? Transition. Just yeah. There's no, you don't get a gold star for just going straight <laughs> no, to carnivore. Yeah, nobody's impressed by that. There's yeah. no point. Yeah, so just, I think that most people can succeed much better if they just ease into it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, turkey sandwiches are cold. Turkey sandwiches are good without the bread. Yeah. Rhett Butler wants to say hi to you guys. So yeah, Rhett. He used to say hi every every Monday, and then Beckett got in the way. Oh yeah. Rhett needs a haircut bad. No, he looks like a woolly mammoth. He looks like a Wookiee. <sighs> did you hear him? He did his Wookiee sound. Jan wants to know, Does Dr. why does Dr. Berry say not to eat the white of an egg? I oh. don't say that. Uh, some people... Say, did you say that? No, well, if if you have an egg allergy or you, you have, you're, you, you're intolerant of eggs, 99% of the time it's the white that you have an intolerance to. And so for people who think they have an egg allergy or think that they have an egg intolerance, and this goes for like, if you have kids and the doc said, oh, they, they shouldn't eat eggs, they're intolerant. The yolks are not the problem. It's, it's always the white that's the problem. Also, um, all of the vitamins and minerals and all of the fat and half of the protein are in the yolk. So by giving the, the white of the egg to the dogs or back to the chickens or whatever, you're not, all you're giving away is protein. There's really not a lot of vitamins and minerals in the white. All that stuff's in the yolk. Okay. So if, if you got to pick, I'm not going to eat the whites or the yolk, uh, go with the yolk. It's much, much more nutritionally complete. The, if you just eat egg whites only and no yolk, you're going to get rabbit starvation because you're just eating protein with no fat and with no vitamins and minerals. All right. Is it okay to be on keto carnivore for life? Yeah, 100%. And is new salt, potassium salt, a good idea for taking potassium? Yeah, I probably wouldn't. I would probably just go back to regular salt. Um, once you're eating a very low-carb diet, the salt's not going to raise your blood pressure at all. Potassium. He's asking for a source of potassium. Oh, I thought he said he was taking potassium. He, he said instead of. For taking potassium. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah, if you want to use new salt, what is it? New salt, no salt, light if salt. In new salt. Yeah, it's potassium chloride. And you can do that if you want to use that as a source of potassium. It doesn't taste as salty to me. I don't like, I don't like the potassium chloride. I like sodium chloride. Um, and then, oh, um, keto for life. Yeah. So that's why we've started calling keto, ketovore, carnivore, the proper human diet. And so if, if I said, can I eat the proper human diet for life? You'd be like, well, duh. Yeah. Why? It's, 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 it's meat and veg. It's fatty acids. It's amino acids. It's vitamins and minerals. It's everything you need. What, why would you not want to eat that for the rest of your life? Then you're like, oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah. So as long as your keto is a real whole food, one ingredient keto that contains real things, you can eat that for the rest of your life. Human beings have been eating that ever since we've been on this planet. April wants to know, can a type one diabetic do carnivore? A hundred percent. Let me tell you somebody to follow. If you're on Twitter, follow a guy called type one burger and he spells burger with an E. That's his last name. Uh, his name is Andrew Berger with an E and he's a type one diabetic and he is a hundred percent carnivore. He, he does intermittent fasting too. And he has decreased his insulin usage by 90% by being a carnivore. Now, if you're a type one, don't just go straight from the standard American diet or the ADA diet to carnivore. You got to go see your doctor and say, Hey, I'm going to start eating a lower carbohydrate diet. I need you to help me step down the insulin as I transition. And, and so it, just for example, if you're eating the ADA diet right now, you're probably eating 200 total grams of carbohydrates a day, right? Somewhere between 150 and 350. 
And so you're as you step down your carbohydrate intake, you're going to also have to step down your insulin injections or you'll develop a hypo and pass out. And we don't want that. So a type one diabetic absolutely can do it and benefit from it. But you got to do it slowly, a slow transition, maybe over two or three or six months. But reach out to Andrew Berger. He's on Facebook, too, I think. And he may have started a YouTube channel. I'm not sure. But he loves to help type 1 diabetics transition to, to either keto or carnivore. Laura wants to know, when a lot of people ask us this, what do we feed our dogs? Do we feed them a keto diet, a carnivore diet? What do we feed the yeah, puppers? They, they eat meat. They are carnivores. They eat meat. Yeah. And, I mean, a Brett, Brett Butler, his fat ass – he would eat bread and cookies every day if we give them to him. He used to try to steal my fat snacks cookies. But yeah, he him, loves cookies. He would steal them. But we're smarter than him. He's a dog. He needs meat. And and dogs can eat some veg, but not a lot. But cats are 100% carnivore. So if, if, you're, if you have a cat that you love and you're feeding them kibble, you need to read the ingredients. Because if there's, if there's corn and soy meal and wheat in there... And Pea protein is yeah, really bad that's, for your That's dog. cat abuse, okay? That's not okay. You are That would be like taking a lion and feeding that lion salad. That's not okay. That's lion abuse. So don't abuse your cats and dogs by feeding them grains. They are not supposed to eat that. I'm looking for, oh, let me just say, if anybody knows a veterinarian, I would love to do a, a, a YouTube, Facebook Live uh, interview with a veterinarian who who understands that and who would help pet owners understand that cats are obligate carnivores and dogs uh, are facultative carnivores. They've got to have mostly meat. Cats got to have all meat. If you know a, car, a, a veterinarian, I'd love to talk to him on a, a YouTube live. America the Great says, I was diagnosed with low AMH and DOR, and I'm about to do IVF. Can I continue daily fasting and only eat dinner? Just need to lose 10 to 12 pounds, and I want to continue keto once I'm pregnant, too. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't do more than a 16-hour fast a day. If you're trying to get pregnant, you really want your body to believe that, that, that food is a plenty, that you live in a cornucopia. And so I wouldn't, I, what do you think? You, I would do carnivore. That way you don't have to fast, but you'll probably still lose those 10 to 12 pounds. If you don't follow Dr. Kiltz, K-I-L-T-Z, he is on Instagram and Facebook as well. He does Facebook Lives a lot and he promotes carnivore. With him. He's a fertility specialist in New York, one of the most successful fertility clinics in America. And that is what he promotes is a carnivore diet. That's and that's I, why he's so successful. That's what I did with my IVF cycle and it worked for me. Fatty meat carnivore, lots of fat, lots of meat. Yeah. How much meat do you feed the dogs? We just feed put them until they're full. Yeah, we don't really measure it out. If they they yeah. tell us when they're hungry. Yeah, they come to us and then we feed them, and then when they're full, they stop eating. Yep. Yeah. Here's a good one. All right. Scott says, does butter coffee break a fast in everyone? How do you know if your fast is broken from that? If the answer is depends on the person. When I drink my butter coffee, it's three tablespoons and 30 ounces over a few hours time span. Yeah. So the things that when we talk about fasting in this arena, we're talking about not eating or drinking anything that's going to elevate your insulin level. Right. That's that's the reason we're fasting for one of the many reasons, but the main reason is to keep our insulin as low normal as we can get it because that's the sweet spot where you burn fat, stored fat. You know that fat on your booty? That's how you get rid of that is by fasting to keep your insulin level low. Now, if you put carbohydrates in your fasting coffee, that's going to spike your insulin. You're not, you broke your fast. If you put protein, like a lot of people put collagen powder, protein powder in their fasting coffee, that's going to that's not going to spike your insulin, but it is going to raise your insulin enough to probably either turn off or slow down the fat burn. But if you put pure fat like coconut oil, like ghee, like butter, uh, like MCT oil, that the fat barely bumps your insulin level at all. Uh, and you can find great charts all over the Internet showing the difference in elevation of insulin between carbohydrates, protein, and fat. 
So I personally don't think putting a little pure fat in your coffee breaks the meaningful low insulin fast that, that we're striving for. Now, if you're trying to do other things, if you're trying to really skyrocket your autophagy and your uh, mitophagy, then you might want to just not even fast with coffee, just fast with water, like Nisha is going to be talking about in her YouTube video tomorrow. But if you're just trying to burn fat and get healthier, putting some butter, some ghee, some coconut oil, or some MCT oil in your coffee is not going to meaningfully break your fast. Cindy wants our thoughts on Bang Energy Drink. <clears throat> All right. The reason I want to talk about this is because it's becoming a thing. Like for a, for a minute, it was just some people were drinking it, and now it's super, super popular. And I drank a few to test them out and see what I thought about them. They're very sweet. Now, they are sweetened with sucralose, which is a zero calorie, and it shouldn't spike your glucose and all that stuff. But the, like, the amount of sweet taste in those is a lot. Be afraid that would trigger you. I would afraid taste. for a lot of people that would definitely break a fast significantly. Yeah. Uh, and they are huge. Like, they're really, really big. So... I think there's worse things, but there's way better things too. Right, right. Yeah, they're they're a little less bad than drinking a Coke, would you say? No. I don't I don't know. <laughs> they're mm, Diet Coke, you mean? Well, no, they're probably the same as drinking a Diet Coke. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But just a regular Coke, know. they're a little less bad. I would not be like, go drink bang, but yeah. you're an adult. So yeah. we do not endorse the drinking of there are a, any energy drink. A lot of people who drink them and do very well and see no bad effects and keep losing weight, don't stall and do fine. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're that person, then keep on keeping yeah. on. But but if you stall, that's probably the reason. That's probably yeah. why. Yeah. Amanda says, I'm so anxious to go totally carnivore, but close. My mom has RA and I have symptoms, although I tested negative. My knees are achy and I swell occasionally. Do you think it's a diet problem? I once was 260 pounds. I'm currently 170. Love you. Yeah, thank you. We love you too. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis, there is a tiny part of that that is genetic and autoimmune, but the the majority of rheumatoid arthritis is a diet issue, okay? So even though you have those genetics, carnivore for you, since you, you have genetics for an autoimmune condition, 100% you need to be carnivore. How many carnivores are carnivore because they had rheumatoid arthritis? Most just so the ones many. that are hardcore. Yeah, and they're the ones that are like, I, I ingest meat. Uh, salt and, and water. water. That's it. Because mm -hmm. rheumatoid arthritis sucks. And so once you've had a flare up or two of that, you're like mm -mm, meat and salt and water. That's that'll be fine because you just don't have flare ups when you're eating a carnivore diet. All right. Phyllis wants to know, can I use pork or beef fat while I'm fasting? Like, yeah. So I mean, just put in your Coffee? I wouldn't. I, you, they're probably talking about eating it. I probably wouldn't. There's probably protein in it. Huh? Use some butter in your coffee or some MCT oil if you're if you're fasting with unsweetened tea, because I, there uh, there's this thing. Okay, so let me talk about this. This is sciencey, but it's called the cephalic phase insulin response. So if you smell like if you're fasting and your partner is over there cooking fresh baked bread and and cinnamon rolls. Just smelling that food is going to raise your insulin a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's the science behind this. Because in the wild, if we smelled something that smelled that damn good, our, immediately we would know we're about to have some carbs in our face, and so our insulin would rise to meet that. Uh, just thinking about food might raise your insulin. And so also chewing, for some of us, might raise our insulin enough and I'm not saying it's terrible. It's the end of the world. I'm just saying it might raise your insulin enough to turn off your fat burn. So I'd rather, if you're going to use some pure fat, I want you to use the minimum amount. So in a cup of coffee, I'll put a teaspoon of butter if I'm starting to get hungry. Uh, same goes for MCT oil, a teaspoonful, just enough to hack your hunger hormones. But I wouldn't chew on suet or put fat in my mouth like a solid form because that could, because of it mimicking eating, uh, bump your insulin by the um, cephalic phase insulin response. I know that's complicated, but so just if you're going to use fat, 
in your fast, use liquid fat and use the minimum amounts you can get by with. Bruce. Bruce. Hello, Bruce. Do protein shakes help with keto and IF? Protein shakes are a waste of money. Eat your meat. Eat meat. That is that is your protein source is meat. Plus, they're not that like, tasty. Well, I mean, it's you're just, you're basically mimicking a milkshake. Ribeye is better than yeah. a protein yeah. shake. Yeah. It tastes better to me anyway. Yeah. If you want to build muscle, eat muscle. I know, I know GNC says you got to drink that drink, but that's, no, that's marketing. The only time we ever recommend protein drinks is if you have a child with some form of disorder and that is a good way to get in protein and maybe exogenous ketones or a older parent with dementia, Alzheimer's yep. or really any form of yep. mental or metabolic disorder yep. that you can sneak in some extra protein and some fat yep. and some exogenous pro uh, ketones because yep. that's when that actually may help. Someone who's had... Something. Had all their teeth pulled, had their jaws yeah. wired shut. You can't get them to eat anything. Have a Lafort 3 fracture. Uh, yeah, they might need to drink a protein and fat shake, but normal people eat your meat. Yeah. Cheesecake for birthdays. Very, that's, very yeah. good. Yeah, um, yeah, that's what I'll be having. Yeah. Well, it's not your birthday this month, is it? When it is my birthday. Well, whose birthday is this month, is my point. Not mine. Whose is it? Um, Becky Berries. Yes. Yeah. Our child is turning one, so he will have a cheesecake. It won't have any sweetener in it. It'll basically be cream cheese. And eggs and, <laughs> and strawberries. Butter and, and blueberries, cream. which yeah. will be his first berries. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. His first fruit. Well, he had avocado. That's technically a fruit. That's but terrible. yeah, his first berry, it will be at one 365 days of age. Yeah. So that'll be his little smash cake. And then we'll have a cheesecake that actually has, uh, I think Melissa puts stevia in hers. Stevia. It'll actually have sweetener in it. And the crust is made from pork panko. And mm. Mm. I think that's all she uses. Honestly. Stop talking. You're raising my insulin. Yeah. So that will be what we're having to celebrate Beckett's birthday. It's actually what we have to celebrate all of our birthdays. Morgan has a cheesecake on her birthday. That's just what we have yep. on birthday. That's what we have. Yep. Keto cheesecake. Homemade. We don't buy it because. Do you have the recipe? Uh, I think it's on Melissa's blog. If you just Google cookingketowithfaith.com cheesecake, it should pop up. Her her daughter's name is Faith, so yes. it's cooking keto with Faith. Uh, Miss Crown of Curls wants to know Ooh. water retention on keto as a woman. Is this a hormone imbalance or too much fat? Oftentimes I am meeting my macros. Definitely not too much fat. Um, you may not be getting enough salt in your diet that can make you whole fluid. Uh, you may have a hormone issue. You may have an undiagnosed thyroid condition. If you're, if you're still having edema or swelling on keto, then eat more salt. Make sure you're you're getting close to your fat macro, if not hitting it, and go see your doc and get some some blood and urine checked to make sure you don't have an undiagnosed condition. Alaska, Tanya guy wants to know what is the best way to increase fats without dairy, so that you know you're getting high enough fat protein ratio per day. We almost never use dairy to get fat protein. Macros, yeah, yeah. almost never. Yeah, yeah. I, I get fat, my fat macro, and we don't count macros, but this is where we get our fat from: butter, ghee, um, bacon fat, bacon grease or bacon fat, tallow. lard, tallow. Yeah, and we cook in everything we cook is cooked in some form of fat like that. Yeah, and then we often put fat on top of our fatty meat that we cooked in fat. That's how we get our fat. And we, yeah. like he said, we don't count macros, but we pretty much do a one to one fat to protein yeah, ratio. That's what it works out to. Yeah. Chronic migraines, no underlying conditions. Should I eat more fat? We probably need more electrolytes. Yeah, I would, I would make sure you're getting plenty of magnesium and all of the electrolytes and really all of the minerals. And the, this is a, this is a good, um, thing to talk about. Any of you guys who are you're on keto and you know you're eating real whole food, one ingredient keto, but you're still having a weird medical issue, that's why on this it says the missing element. Because a lot of times, a lot of us have a mineral deficiency that we were not aware of. 
and, and a lot most doctors don't check your mineral level, so you just don't know. So that's why it's called the missing element is because many times the reason you're still having that migraine is you're deficient in magnesium or one of the other minerals, uh, and, and that's that's what's going on. You may not be getting enough magnesium from your diet, so I think Nish is exactly right about that. Um, I would I would move more towards ketovore or carnivore, I would make sure that you're eating well under 20 total grams of carbs a day. So many thousands of people have reached out to us and say, you know, I'm ketovore or carnivore, my migraines are gone. They're better on keto, but they're gone on ketovore or carnivore. We both had migraines yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. I haven't had a migraine now in five years. Yeah. I can't even remember the last time. And I used to have at least one a month. It was just standard. I took ibuprofen almost every single day yep, for yep, headaches. Yep, yep. So the, I mean, the, there's no research proving that keto or carnivore prevents migraines, but I'm, there are so many tens of thousands of people who have reached out to us and said that, yeah, you can't ignore that. Jolie wants to know, is keto anti-inflammatory? It is the most uninflammatory diet that I have ever recommended. I've never seen a diet like keto and carnivore that calms down your immune system and helps your immune system recognize the difference between you and other things. I've never seen a diet that calms down the inflammation in joints, in your stomach if you've got reflux, in your skin if you've got rosacea or eczema or psoriasis or hydratinitis suppurativa. I mean, it just, it takes care of all those inflammatory issues that are chronic inflammation. Now, if you sprain your ankle, that's acute inflammation and you need that. That's a good thing. Keto ain't going to get rid of that. Your ankle's going to swell up and get painful and red and hot and swollen. That's good. That's how your ankle's going to heal. What I, the inflammation I'm talking about is chronic, inappropriate, unproductive inflammation that just causes suffering, but doesn't cause a cure. That's the inflammation that keto and carnivore get rid of. Hey. Hi. How you doing? Do you want to mention the lab class? Oh, yeah. Quick? Uh, if I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but me and Kim Howerton do a lab class or course, and it's, it's coming up pretty shortly. I put a link down in the show notes on YouTube and Facebook. It's not on Instagram. It won't let me do that. But uh, how much is it? I forgot. I don't like 20 remember. something bucks. No, it's not. It's not that no. much. No, it's more than it's that. It's more than that. I don't yeah. know how much it is. It comes with a PDF, a bunch of information, print offs to take to your doctor for reference. Yeah. And then you also do a Facebook live or yeah. and answer call. questions because we're always talking about get this lab check, get that lab check. This lab course tells you all the labs that we recommend for different age groups and for different symptoms. And then also, the not only the normal range of those lab tests, but the ideal optimal spot where you want your lab uh, result to be. And so uh, just go to common sense labs course.com. It's in the show notes on YouTube and Facebook. And uh, if it costs too much, I understand. Yeah, but I, I don't know. It's 50, 60, 30. I don't know. I can't remember. I forgot. I didn't, I didn't make up the know. price. Common sense. But it's a ton course. of information to help you understand what the labs mean, which labs you need, and where the sweet spot of normal is. Okay. Any other things we need to talk about? Talk about that. Talk about that. Oh, once again, let me say, if you, you're always welcome to share these videos. Share them with your mama, your daddy, your next door neighbor. If you know somebody that needs some keto in their life and they just won't listen to you, maybe they'll listen to us. And so you could send the link for this video in an email or a text message and say, hey, there's a doctor and a nurse who say keto is good for you. You should watch this. I've had so many uh, people reach out and say, hey, my mom is keto now because of you. She wouldn't listen to me, but I sent her one of your videos and she loved you because you got that accent. And now she's trying to teach me about keto. I've heard that so many times. So that's an excellent strategy to get an older relative or an older neighbor or loved one to, to believe that keto is, is the proper human diet is they need to hear it from a doctor and a nurse. So you're always welcome to share. Also, the lab course is tomorrow. So if you're interested in that, you need to go ahead and do that tonight. Gotcha. gotcha. So that you got that. You're in the, in the circle.
Um, tomorrow I will have a video up on my channel about fasting and all my tips and tricks that I've learned over the last several years. And then you've got a new video coming out tomorrow as well. Yep, about autism and how to use a very low carbohydrate diet to lessen the symptoms of autism. So be looking for that. And Dr. Barry's working on a new book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aren't it's, you? I am. I am. Uh, I have ADD and a new baby and a, a wife that has a long honeydew list. But I am working on the book There's in between. one thing on that list. You know, okay, I see, what you, I see what you're doing there. Yeah. Put it all on me. Let it rain down. Is it going to be a good book? I think it will, too, if I can ever get my lazy button You here. can do it. Just you, He needs some encouragement from you guys. <laughs> and you ladies, you need to tell him to get on the ball because this information needs to get out to the world. Right? That's, that is very true. Yeah. That is very true. This is the one that talked me into starting a YouTube channel with just such talk as that. I'm so sorry. It's all your fault. It's my job. Blame okay. it on Misha loves it. When somebody wants to know what is the topic of your book? It, it is tentatively titled The Proper Human Diet. And it's going to talk about uh, the what food we should eat, which, which, what food we should avoid. It's going to include uh, a chapter or two about fasting. It's going to also talk, be, talk about the proper human life. It's going to include sleep. It's going to include sun exposure. No, it doesn't cause cancer. Uh, it's going to it's going to talk about minerals. There will be at least one, if not two chapters about minerals and how that for many of us, that's the missing element of our health. It's like I'm doing everything else right. I'm eating keto, real food, I'm fasting. I'm doing all this other stuff, but I still have this one thing that won't get better. A lot of times it's a lack of minerals or a mineral deficiency. There's going to be chapters about supplements. There's going to be chapters about that'll be a short chapter. Um, what else have we talked about? I've got, I've got sleep. it. Did you mention yeah, sleep? sleep? I've got it out on the whiteboard. I've already got it mapped out. I've just got to it's, sit my lazy ADD butt in the chair. You can stand up while you do it. <clears throat> no, I can't write. It's basically how the our proper human way of living and prospering and being optimized is more than just the food. Now, yep. food is very, very important, but then there's other things involved as well. <clears throat> yep. Pretty much all the advice that you've got about eating, not eating, sleeping, having sex, every literal piece of advice we've gotten in the last 50 or 60 years is a fad and is not how humans have done it for the 99.999% of the time we've been on this planet. So this book is going to basically try to make it a fad to do it the old way, to go for a walk in the sun every morning with your loved one, holding hands and talking instead of playing on your phone. It's going to, it's going to really, and so we can still be modern scientific uh, senescent beings and we can be that but we've got to honor our ancient DNA or we will suffer with chronic disease that, that bravo, kind of sums it up. Bravo. Yeah. bravo so get on it okay okay God. okay guys make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and his YouTube channel if you haven't already subscribed click it right now right it's right there it's not for mine you gotta go look like back. and follow on Facebook and Instagram. And Instagram. That's right. And hit the thumb up. Everything. Hit the thumbs. Hit all the stuff. Tell Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram that more people need to hear about this stuff. Yeah. Because they do. Yep. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks so much to our Facebook supporters. And I think that I can you can give me some kind of little sticker or something on Instagram now. I think that's new. Thanks so much to our patrons on patreon.com. These are these people are a keto family. Thanks for the stars on Facebook. Uh, tomorrow night, if you didn't get enough of us, we'll be in our live in our private Facebook group that's just for patrons and Facebook supporters. But you may have already heard enough of me running my trap. Or you can go watch a playlist on this YouTube channel or on my YouTube channel. Yep. If you want to see what we eat in a day, I have a whole playlist on my channel. You can binge watch that yep. and see Baby Beck and what yep. he eats too. If you're broke right now and you can't afford to be a patron or a supporter you tomorrow when you go to work you can give your cat some meat because that's what they need and you can put the on tv put our youtube channel and just let it play the playlist all day long that'll help us watch for the cat for the cat you don't want your cat to get bored and you don't want your cat to eat kibble love your cat okay how's that
We're good. We'll see you next Monday right here, same place, same time, 7 Central Standard Time, Mondays every week. That's it. Thanks so much, guys. See you next time.